Hello everyone, this is Sharifa. Apologies for the lack of uh, uh, activity on this channel. It's been a while since I last uploaded a video, but I promise to be more uh, um, consistent to a post or stick to a specific posting schedule. Um, so I think the name of the channel says it all, Gardening in Kuwait, um, uh, where we try to uh, grow different types of plants from around the world and test and see if they can uh, flourish in a climate like ours. Uh, just to recap, um, I live in Kuwait, a small uh, country in the Arabian Peninsula um, where temperatures in the summer exceed 50 degrees Celsius. As a matter of fact, last July, July 2021, temperatures in Kuwait um, um, uh, uh, we had the highest uh, recorded temperature ever on Earth, which was 53.6 degrees Celsius. And in the winters, we get temperatures that go to minus one degree Celsius. Uh, so we'll take a quick walk through in the greenhouse. Everything here has been grown from seed. Some of the uh, uh, types, uh, some of the plants or some of the seedlings have already been um, tried in the garden. Um, so let's just uh, take a quick tour and I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through all the different types we are trying to experiment and trying to see whether or not they, they actually could uh, uh, thrive in, a, in our climate. Here we can see the Brachychitin repestris or the Queensland bottle tree. We have grown a few in the ground, however, they're not much bigger than those you can see in the picture at the moment. Um, so far they're doing well. Uh, uh, a few of them have withstood two summers and as I mentioned we have very hot summers in Kuwait uh, we are still we are yet to see them grow big and enjoy that bottle like trunk that they have so you can see all the new um, leaves and everything's is looking well for those and the ones on the ground as well now I'll be walking you through our latest experiments. So the first is the Pseudobombax uh, rubra, I think, if I am not mistaken. Unfortunately, I don't have the name written down in full. But um, this is the one with uh, red colored flowers. There's another one with yellow, uh, white colored flowers, sorry. The, wa the one with white flowers has already proven to withstand our temperatures because it has been planted in Kuwait Zoo and it's doing well. Um, this is our first time trying, so I, I guess we'll just wait and see. Um, if I were to describe it, then I would say it would. It is very closely related to a bombax in terms of it shedding all of its leaves, then flowering with leafless branches, and then getting new leaves on the branches. So I think if I were to describe it, it would be something similar. So this is the pseudo bombax also something else that has done beautifully in the garden for a few for a couple of years especially under direct sun is the shortia bracticella beautiful uh, tree um, with red flowers the flowers attract birds and bees because it has some kind of sugary syrup um, so this we have proven to withstand our temperatures beautifully this the shortia bracticella This is the Calicarpa Americana. This is the first time we've grown from seed, uh, not yet uh, tried in the garden, um, but has very beautiful um, purple looking berries that grow on them, very nice and very iridescent. Um, so we are yet to try this out in the garden. This is the Bolisanthus speciosus or African wisteria tree. We have around 10 of them out in the garden under direct sunlight doing wonderfully as well. Um, they stop growing leaves in the winter, but in summer, even in 50 plus temperatures, we, we, we continuously, continuously <laughs> see new growth and new leaves. Here we have all the different seed trays we're growing. So uh, this is a type of Malaluca, which are we are yet to uh, test outside in the garden. This is a Grevelia robusta. Uh, this is the first time we tried growing it from seed, bearing in mind that a few months ago I found an established tree in the nursery, in the garden nursery, and bought it. When once planted in the ground, didn't really do well and died. So I, I, I thought I'd give them, give it a try with the seeds and probably then uh, slowly have it um, get used to our weather outside. 
maybe it has a higher tolerance for the weather then. So this is uh, under ex experimentation, I would say. Also here we have two different types of agaves. Uh, this is agave magnifica, and this is the octopus agave. Um, also trying it for the first time here in our climate. Um, the seed trays are full. I need to try to separate them soon. And here is a type of Indugafera called Indugafera australis with um, pink flowers. Uh, we already have tried uh, Indugafera tinctoria out in the garden. Um, it has been blooming beautifully, um, uh, purple flowers, but this is with pink flowers. Also yet to try it in the garden. This is a type of hibiscus, also called hibiscus australis. Uh, the seeds we are growing are from the actual plant we have planted in our garden. What amazed us about this plant is that it would always bloom or it would continuously bloom throughout the hottest months in Kuwait. They are very nice pink, um, uh, big yellow flowers, beautiful flowers. So the seed tray, we, we're still having uh, seeds sprout, so that's a good indication. Also here we have a type of Epomea. This is native to Mexico. And I'll just zoom into the name so you can all have a, a clear view of the name, Epomea muricoides. So this is native to North America or Central America, Mexico. So these are the seedlings. This is a bigger one. Um, the reason you can see the spots here is because um, white flies seem to be attracted to it. Um, and I've been spraying it with neem oil and soap. Um, so no white flies now, or I hope, well actually there is white flies now, as you can see here, <laughs> which I'll have to tackle once I'm done uh, filming this video. Those are Puya alpestris, which I have grown from seed in November 2020, or called Sapphire Tower, because of the be beautiful blue flowers, um, they produce. So this, I have grown 10 in the garden recently, um, two months ago maybe, or a month and a half ago. Um, let's see if it withstands the winter and then if it withstands summer 2022. So this is the Puyas, which have all been grown from seed as well. So here I'm growing saguaro cactuses. It'll take ages for them to grow, I understand, but it's always fun, at least for me, to grow things from seed. So here you can see all of them trying to sprout. I hope it's clear though. I'm trying my best to be steady. So this is one as well. Here we've grown Aliogynes, Aliogyne hackifolia. They've done beautifully in our weather, um, producing uh, beautiful uh, purple flowers very light purple flowers maybe you can call them lilac flowers maybe that would be a better explanation or description so those are aliogynes which have grown from seed on the 30th of may speaking of brachychitans this brachychitan brachychitan populanius has proven to be amazing and in withstanding our weather very hardy um, it, it produces flowers however we are yet to see them um, it has a very nice trunk and a very nice crown. I think I've shown you at least four brachychitans in this video, but let's move along and I'll show you the cassia, cassia roxburghi to be exact. This is it. This is a plant also grown from seed a few months ago. And this produces, um, this is the cassia roxburghi. I don't, I don't remember if I mentioned that or not. Um, Oops, where is it? Okay, here it is. You can see it here. Uh, so this produces very nice red flowers. It's native to India. Uh, this blooms heavily throughout the months of June till November. So basically the hottest months in the year here. Very beautiful plant. Highly recommended if you live in an area or a climate similar to ours. We're also testing Acacia stenophila or shoestring Acacia. Um, uh, all the research I've done uh, seem to suggest that they would handle climates like ours, but that is yet to be proven. 
Also here we have the Acacia purpurea with a very dark foliage, turning very dark and purplish maybe in color with yellow flowers. Um, the seedling is quite small. Um, I've lost a few here and here and here, so I've lost three, but I have this one left on the brink of living and um, this and I have uh, a couple of more. This is the Acacia purpurea. This is just the Aloe dicotoma, it's native to Namibia, but we're giving it, try, uh, giving it a try as well. These are Kirkus sabers or, or cork trees. Not so sure if they would um, thrive in our climate, but uh, let's just give it a try. Thought we'd give it a try and see. So this is the cork tree. Again, these are the Epomias, which are similar to the ones I showed you earlier in this video reason why the leaves are this way is because I think of the white flies. Uh, it's not white fly season in the greenhouse yet. Um, so I'm very surprised to see them just on those uh, six different plants. Um, so we'll keep a close eye on those. Um, if it gets worse, I think we'll just have to transfer them to the garden outside. Here we've got a couple of seed trays with Acacia cultiformis um, seeds. You can see them grow, just a few here and there, but we'll keep, a, we'll keep you updated on those. Speaking of epomias, this is another type of epomia. The ones I showed you earlier were ones with white flowers. This comes with yellow flowers, and here we can see the first seedling emerge. So we'll keep you updated on this. Hopefully we wouldn't get, we wouldn't get an issue with white flies as well. Uh, those two pots are Cassia pendulas, Acacia pendulas. Uh, they seem to be doing well in the garden outside. So I think that uh, could be considered a win for us, right? So those have been grown from seed and just look at how the leaves are. Tipuana tipu, native to Bolivia, with very dark yellow flowers. It's a huge tree, um, evergreen. First time we ever grow from seed and first time trying it out in Kuwait. Uh, these are the Agapenthes, Lily of the Nile. I'm sure most of you know how they look like. Um, do they handle our climate? Um, yes, um, they do beautifully in spring. They also bloom. However, in the summer, all the leaves die, uh, die back, have to be cut off and then new sets of leaves emerge once the weather is a bit cooler. Uh, this is a Butia monosperma, commonly known as a fling tree, I think. Um, uh, this is the only um, plant we have We've grown from seed. This is yet to be tried in the garden outside. Um, so we'll, we'll up update you on this as well, hopefully in the future. Here we've got the calabash tree. We first transplanted one in the ground um, few months ago, probably around April 2021, um, the highest, the, the, the leaves on the highest branches were a bit affected with the heat in the summer, uh, but we've pruned that and uh, since then we've been seeing beautiful new growth. Uh, so I think this is a win as well, but I'll keep you updated. We'll see how it does in the winter as well, because not only do we have harsh summers, but we also have harsh winters. Um, uh, so I'll update you on the calabash tree as well. A few months ago, I uploaded a video about growing Shotia brachypetalis from seeds. And all the seeds in that uh, seed tray are those uh, seedlings here. Uh, we relocated them to an outside location in the garden just for them to get uh, used to our weather outside as opposed to being in regulated temperatures in a greenhouse. So these are the Shotia brachypetalis um, from that video. Very impressive growth. And as I've mentioned, those have been doing beautifully under the direct sun. Um, I think this is the second year that has passed since um, a few have been transplanted to, to the ground in our garden. These are also Bolisanthus speciosus, which we've grown from seed a few months ago. As I mentioned, they don't really do well in the winter, uh, but um, once the weather um, once uh, the weather starts warming up again, we see all the new growth and new leaves. So this is how they look in the winter.
obviously those Colvelias racemosas are not enjoying the drop in temperatures. <laughs> you can see how flimsy the branches look. Um, but we've transplanted two in the garden um, a few months ago. They're doing well, but those small seedlings, I, I probably should have left them in the greenhouse for a li little longer. I'll see if I'll, I'll relocate them to the greenhouse. Those are uh, Adansonia digit uh, digitatas or digitatas doing well. And this is the first time we try the Cassia lepti, what's it called? Cassia leptophila, yeah, Cassia leptophila. Um, but this had issues in the greenhouse, so I relocated them out, uh, outside.